Hi everyone and welcome to another week in the other world. Um, it's been a little while since we've done a podcast and the last few that we've done, Fee, have been um, kind of interviews or conversations with women about their experiences on land and um, we both um, almost have had a little bit of a break which has been interesting from the podcast um, but we're going to start these weekly conversations again which, which I'm so excited about. Um, and on that note, I'd love to know a little bit about what's going on in your world and how your week's been. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, um, yes, I mean, we're in such interesting times, aren't we? And, um, you know, for me personally, I have had this tendency to be a bit hermit-like over the last few months. It's just this, uh, you know, desire really to just be in my own space. I haven't been very social at all. And um, I've been very connected to my family and just spending time with my family. And I've noticed a lot of other people have been experiencing that too. Um, but, you know, this week, uh, and the energies, of course, have been very intense, which I'm sure we'll at some point during the conversation, we're bound to talk about because we're all experiencing this. But on a personal level, I mean, I was woken up at four o'clock last night and couldn't get back to sleep again for a couple of hours and then realized it was the full moon. I think it hits here around 12 today. And you know, and just thought, oh, shit, here we go again, because every full moon <laughs> it happens. And it's either the day before or the, you know, a couple of days before that I get this night where I just wake up and for no reason whatsoever, can't get back to sleep again. It's just sitting in that uh, intense energy. So, you know, I tried all the usual things. I did a little meditation, which I couldn't get into. I um, started to read my book. I, you know, started to struggle to get back to sleep. And in the end, I just gave up and just laid there until I fell off to sleep. It was almost like I just had to surrender to whatever it was and then of course couldn't get out of bed this morning which was great <laughs> so it's been an interesting start to the day um but this week I think for me I've been yeah very I've been very insular my sleeping patterns have been very odd for the last few months and this week I kind of felt like apart from last night my sleeping patterns had actually gone back into some kind of normality. Um, and I was feeling, I think I've been feeling really intensely in my body, the shift between the seasonal changes that we're experiencing here in Australia. Of course, we're going from winter into spring here. And I feel like my body is starting to wake up again because it's been very heavy. I felt very heavy and dense and not wanting to do much, not going out for my usual walks, not doing you know, the amount of exercise that I normally do. I feel like I've been in hibernation, actually, like a bear. I've just been hibernating away. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. It, it it makes me feel like I'm in tune with the energy of the earth. I'm actually, you know, kind of aligned to it in some way. So it hasn't at all felt uncomfortable or negative or heavy to do that. It's actually felt quite nurturing to do that. But I have noticed this week that my body's, there's a desire to move again, to get out again, to be outside. I'm really craving being outside and I'm going on a road trip next week and going up north and I'm really looking at, forward to being out of the house and out in the, the countryside and, and doing all of that. So it's been a very interesting week in terms of just observing these kind of inner shifts, uh, not really questioning anything too much, just kind of going with the flow of it and trying uh, for myself to just let it be whatever it needs to be just let it be because there's been resistance to that and there's been a lot of questioning over the last few months of what's shifting and you know these are such big times there's so much going on the intensity is quite overwhelming at times and I don't normally get really overwhelmed by the energies around me you know the collective energies but I have noticed that quite strongly recently as well and I think that's been part of the the sort of call to go more within and not be 
too connected to any of that energy. So, I mean, there's so much I could talk to you since we had the last, the last podcast, but that's a brief look at where I've been this week. Uh, what's been happening for you? I oh, mean, no, I no, noticed... no, no. I want to stay with oh, you first. Oh, oh okay. Cool. <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> oh, because, great. You know, yeah, I want, I'm kind of interested to know, like, I mean, there were so many bits that resonated for me there, but um, I'm, I'm interested to know in the shifts, because you said there's so much shifting, like on a personal note, what are you finding those shifts to be? Well, for me, it's, um, you know, as, as, I, as you know, we, I, I'm at this kind of, uh, I wouldn't say a crossroads in my life, but I'm reaching the point where myself and Clive are looking at what we want to do moving forwards as, you know, we're, we're both 61 and he's in the process of selling his business. And we had this clear kind of pathway ahead. And I can feel a lot of that shifting. It's like the pathway we thought we were on has all of a sudden changed. And there's question marks again, whereas we thought there was clarity. And so it's felt very much as if I've needed to sit in that. And it's been very uncomfortable to find the pathway forward again, as it's brought up a lot of old questions for me around, you know, are we making the right decisions? You know, uh, do I really want to semi-retire at the moment? Or do I want to keep working? You know, there's so much to ask. And I think that I had an expectation that when I reached this point in my life, it would really be, um, so clear cut you know you've reached that age you want to retire this is what you're going to do and it's been quite the opposite for me it, it's it's raised so much in terms of questions around what I personally want to do and what we want to do as a couple and so I've noticed over this time that we've been sitting in this very intense energy that that keeps changing I keep going in and out of clarity around it and that feels very uncomfortable for me because I'm used to getting really clear guidance um, and it feels very much as if I just have to keep working with it allow it to keep shifting almost ignore it and just let it keep shifting around me because these are external uh, influences on my internal experience of it and I need to just hold myself in my internal experience and let those shifts happen so that my clarity comes back in uh, and almost switch off from it a bit, which feels quite odd <laughs> to do. Mm, yeah. I don't know if but, any of that made sense, but that's what not it makes complete like. sense. So you're sit yeah. so so where you're sitting into there aren't answers. You're just sitting with the questions that are coming up and, and changing. And you know, you think you're going down one path and it's like, oh, maybe not that. Um, which kind of really sounds to me like the um, dragon's tail and dragon's head, which is the north and south node, which is very much where we are at the moment um, with the north and south node. And you're a Taurus, so you've got the north node sitting in your sign, um, as yeah. I am as well. So I can I can so relate to to so much there, and it's really beautiful for me to have had um, you moving through life ahead of me you know that kind of like <laughs> five or six years ahead of me where I'm like I can get a little bit of a, a view of what's to come I mean obviously we negotiate things quite differently but the yes. same thing you know with moving through um, menopause which is a big thing for me right now and I've kind of had this um, way shower ahead of me um, giving me a kind of an idea of what's to come which has been so helpful um, and beautiful and I think is um, so important for women to have these different age ranges around to be able to see, you know, um, different experiences and, and, and be open and honest with each other about what's going on, not just the beauty in life, but, you know, the, the kind of the struggles and the ugly bits as well. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and I think important as well at that time of life, because, you know, when we're younger and we we become parents, if we choose that for ourselves and we find our way through parenthood, often we look to our own parents or our own mother for, you know, advice and guidance around that, if we're lucky enough for them to be there for us. But when we get to the age where we're starting as women to move into menopause and, you know, where I'm at now, that 
retirement stage. That isn't really often very often talked about. We don't have conversations around it as much. I mean, that is starting to shift, thank goodness. Um, and my mum hasn't been here for me since I was in my mid-20s. So, you know, I haven't had her as that frame of reference. So I've often sought out those conversations with women older than me that have gone through what I'm going through now, just to learn, just to to change my expectations of what it would be as well, particularly with menopause, because my memory of menopause is my mum's experience of it viewed from the person I was at that time, which was a young woman who saw it very differently. And I saw it as this thing to be feared and was horrible. And, you know, and therefore that was my expectation of it. And whilst it isn't a joyful thing in any shape or form, it, you know, it, there was, it was certainly a different experience to the one that I had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, lots of changes ahead for you. Yes, with, yeah. and, and, um, and where are you traveling to? Um, I'm going up north to Byron Shire. Um, I'm going to stay at my friend's house. I'm traveling up with a girlfriend and we're just going. She's thinking of moving up there at some point next year. And um, we're looking at for the possibility of moving up there. So there's a few properties I want to go and have a look at. And I just want to introduce her to the areas I know around there in the, in the Byron Shire because she's familiar with Byron but not Byron Shire itself. So we're just going up on a little road trip to uh, escape the city <laughs> and just have a little break and yeah. catch up with some friends. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that um, COVID's done for a lot of us is really expanded where we could see ourselves living because we don't, we're not so tied, you know, in a work sense or, um, um, and so, I guess sometimes in a family sense, because we've been so isolated from our families around us as well, it's kind of opened up this possibility of I could live somewhere else, I could live, you know, further yeah. away. Definitely. I mean, freedom is something I'm really seeking at the moment. And um, that that is a big part of that is the freedom to work wherever I want. And I'm lucky enough now that with my work, 99% of that is online anyway now so it's it's I can move it I can take it with me wherever I go which is perfect for me and I love that we you know I think there was a lot of resistance to working online in the beginning from me um, and then because of COVID it's really as you said it's really opened up opportunities that weren't there before and it has expanded uh, the way that we can reach out and work with people. And I actually love this way of working now. I feel more comfortable working online than I do in person. Not that I feel uncomfortable working in person, but I think I prefer to work online now. I just love it. Teaching, whether I'm teaching, doing sessions with people. It, it just, I just love this way of work. You know, I could sit here in my pajamas, literally, <laughs> some days, because I have clients all around the world. And, you know, I stick a jumper on and sit in my pajamas and do a session with them at five. All right, come on, give us your pajama pants and a seat. <laughs> I actually got jeans on at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but five o'clock in the morning, sometimes that's, uh, yeah. And sadly, at the moment, my office is in my bedroom. So I can literally just get out of bed and work as long as I make my bed behind me first. <laughs> yes, well, it's always looking nice and tidy in there. <laughs> uh, oh, that's all so interesting. And it's, um, you know, I was thinking... It, you've brought up like lots of topics of conversation here just just amongst that and one I was thinking of is um, connections and the connections that I grow online because I've been quite a an avid social media um, person I was big in Facebook I had quite a few groups or was um, you know a community manager for a really big group and and even now I'm quite prolific on 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 Instagram and and, and have friendships around the world with women and men that are online I've never met them but I've known them for years and uh, and see them through a screen and I'm so comfortable like that I love it in a way that 
I kind of restrict myself a little bit in real life. I'm, I'm such a hermit and I'm so um, um, an introvert. I mean, not to say that I can't, you know, like I'm not really passionate when I'm out or, you know, with a group of people, but mostly I feel really comfortable in my own space and not with that many people physically. And yet online, I have this freedom or this expression that kind of takes on a different, a different, um, and I kind of, if I wonder about that, I wonder about maybe it's the safety of sitting in a room where you feel comfortable and then being on a screen with people where, whether it's, it's just that um, you're not getting quite as much of a um, energetic overload. What's your oh, thoughts? I, yeah, I absolutely agree with that because I think as we become um, more connected in that way, we also, I feel, become more aware of our own energy and where we often find ourselves you know, being depleted energetically, or we find that we, you know, we step into situations where there's a lot of people around us, our energy acts very differently to how it acts when we're, you know, on our own and in our own environment. And we're going through a time at the moment where energetically we're becoming more sensitive. And, you know, this is necessary. Uh, for us to connect to each other in in new ways in the new way that's unfolding for us however it does have its downside it makes us more sensitive to being in in groups of people you know I know personally I don't know if you've noticed this for yourself I find it really uncomfortable now to be in group big groups of people I very rarely go to a shopping mall for example and that was something that never fazed me before just being around too many people I don't enjoy I can do it it's fine but I don't enjoy it and I think there is this this need for us to keep our own energy in integrity at this time and so the desire is for us to um, to make that choice for ourselves it's not about I mean this is the key thing it's not about protecting yourself because that disempowers you to feel you need to protect yourself it's more about holding your own energy and integrity in the way you know feels comfortable for you that's an empowering way to sort of look, look at it and work with it but I totally agree it's that and I think this is why I enjoy working in this way and connecting this way with people because I don't feel impacted in any way shape or form by this type of work with people mm. it's almost like there's this sort of barrier there around our energy but we can connect as deeply still as we would if we were in person with someone mm. it's almost um it's almost like when you're working energetically and, and you change you know the, the your aura in order to kind of like um allow in or not allow in certain frequencies and it's like the screen yes. does that in some way there's a filter yeah. that happens there Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, it does it for you, effectively. You don't need to even think about it. And, you know, I think it's so important, though, that we don't think of it in terms of that sensitivity being a negative thing or feeling disempowered through it. It's just a shift we're going through at the moment. And this, you know, we're, we're shifting our vibration collectively and individually. And therefore, as we do that, we're going to notice that shift at the physical level in a in a new way because we haven't we haven't done it like this before we haven't experienced it like this in any way before we haven't been able to mm, God. that's a massive conversation in itself isn't it <laughs> it sure is ain't yeah. that the truth god we're in yeah. new, we're in new times <laughs> yeah and so you know let is I want to find out what's been happening for you I see you sitting in front of your beautiful artwork and I know that you've you know been doing a lot of painting I could see it on your hands when you move them <laughs> always covered and, so, and on my pants too <laughs> totally covered in. <laughs> I'm in my so, bleak painting clothes <laughs> well that's great perfect so you know what what's been happening for you hmm, okay well let's uh Sort of unpack. Well, hmm. I mean, I've I, I have had massive shifts with with um, but you know, I think I've I have expressed them a little bit on the podcast in terms of moving into um creating my own art. I mean, um I I, I did a lot of um 
of work with uh, other people and their creativity and unblocking creativity and going into areas of um, um, messaging, negative messaging and judgments around creativity. Um, and, and I've done that for a while and then just really stepped into, um, oh no, I just want to, I just want to work on my own stuff now. And, and that has been a huge shift in 2021 um, and 2022 for me, um, which has been really beautiful because obviously when you're concentrating on your art, you're concentrating on yourself. Um, and, you know, I like to say that the canvas is a mirror. And so I'm just basically seeing myself every day. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, that's been a couple of big years of emotion that, that comes out um, onto the canvas. And, and, and I, I've noticed that when I post things and I get comments back on my art, um, there's, there's a whole different way that other people are viewing me that I can see in their comments about my art that may or may not be true. Um, and I just kind of sit with it and I, and I wonder at some times of like, what am I not showing at times um, because of the comments I get back? Um, what are the parts of me I'm not showing because I can tell from the way it's been received? So it's it's this it really, and, 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 and not to make any judgments on that, not that I want, well, actually that's not true. I really want to be seen through my art. Um, and so to, but then also to not judge how other people are seeing me, because obviously it's through their own lens that they're viewing it. But I'm kind of sitting in this interesting observing space of that, um, how much of myself is really being seen in my work. Um, that's been, um, yeah, the last, the, and probably really diving into that, that's been the last kind of month or so, really looking at, what am I not showing? What am I, what am I hiding in the color or in the brightness or um, that is hiding something else? So yeah, that's, that's the art piece. Um, uh, gosh, just so much life-wise, energy-wise, you know, this, this, this full moon, this, or everything that's going on astrologically with Taurus and Scorpio. And, you know, now we're in Leo season. So we've got this, like, um, we've got the four corners of the, of the astrological wheel all being, like, really um, um, enlivened right now. So you've got Leo, Aquarius, Taurus and Scorpio, um, big planets and all four really squaring off with each other or opposing each other. So there's there's quite a lot for, and that they're all fixed signs. There's, there's a lot happening for anybody that has fixed um, things in their, in, their, in their charts. And you and I both sit in the fixed sign of Taurus as our sun. So that's it's big for us. I'm not surprised that we're seeing um, and feeling so much. Um, and it's all around that kind of like change or what, what's not working for me. Um, or, or wanting freedom or um, losing some kind of the, the underlying kind of structures or feeling called into putting more in place. It's just, there's so many massive big topics. Um, and I can feel all of that happening internally rather than externally. You know, I'm feeling quite settled where I am and in so many ways, but I can feel that shake up happening um, in my work, mostly in my work. and, and um, um, and how I kind of manifest me um, on, on this planet, which at the moment is, is visually. Um, yeah, I don't know if that <laughs> gave you a little bit of a view of my week. <laughs> well, I have a question, actually, that's sitting on my, you know, sitting in my awareness, but I don't actually know what it is till I speak it. So I hope it comes out okay. But it was that piece you said about you want people to see you through your art. And, you know, the question I have around that is, do you feel people don't see you outside of your art? Or do you feel that this is the best way for you at this time to express who you are? I think there's two questions in there. But yeah. I'd love, I'd love to dive into that a little bit. Um, I think that it's just that I have I feel more and more desire to show myself in this way 
um, that's become a joyful expression for me um, where um, connections and talking, I mean, I've always, you know, I've got Venus and Gemini, so communication and talking and conversations has been a, a big part, group work, group circles has been a big part of my life for a long time. And now I'm feeling the call to express that in a different way. And that seems to me to be coming um, out in, coming out visually. And um, I mean, you can get lost in circles, you can get lost in groups. And I think that, that I can't get lost when I'm confronted with just me and paint and, and, and a piece of paper that's like, you know, it doesn't matter what I put on it. It is an expression of me. It just, it's just interesting to me to watch what comes up in terms of, you know, what's going through my brain, what sentences I'm saying, what, um, what I want to create on a particular day. So I've found what's really lighting me up is to not restrict myself at all every day. So I'm finding that the pieces that I create are changing like ridiculously every day because I'm really coming from a place of where am I today? And so there's a lot of um, the same pieces just being painted over and over and over again. And I'm going with it right now because it just, it just is where I'm at. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but I do feel a shift from where I express myself with groups to now expressing in a much more intimate way. Um, with it's just me and me and what's in front of me. Oh, I love that reflection on it. I think another thing that you said there, uh, which was interesting, was that you said that you're noticing shifts in your work as well. And I assume your work outside of art. Is that is that right? Is it something that you're noticing with the other work that you do? Uh, well, this is constant kind of, um, I'm going to call it like a tension between just creating and knowing that there's also a you know a, an everyday piece of, of of needing to live and and have money and, and and make money and what that's been for me in the past is quite different from what it is today but also wanting to stay really in integrity with what I want to do um, and I can notice this 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 tension this pull between the two um, more and more so probably because I step more and more into doing what I want to do. And then um, when, when that's not necessarily um, creating um, money for, for me, it's like, do I, do I have to start doing something that doesn't feel so in aligned with me? And there's just such a no there for me because it's taken me a long time to get to this point. Um, I'm also really aware of what I show my kids in that respect of um, being an example for them, wanting them to also follow their hearts and also wanting them to be comfortable and not struggle. So it's just this, I'm, I'm noticing all of that. I'm not really answering the questions. I'm just kind of like you, it's where I sit in these questions. Um, and I think we, we, we had a little bit of a conversation probably privately about that, where the money and manifestation and work area is where Taurus sits and my um, North Node sits in my chart. And I think for you, it, it is more around family and home and, and where you're, you know, moving in that respect. So it's kind of interesting that we're actually seeing that North Node actually working um, within our lives now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're sitting in very interesting times energetically, and I'm sure you've got something beautiful to share around that for maybe the, this time that we're in or moving forward. Uh, I'd love to hear what you, you know, because it always helps me. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll come from a different perspective with it, but it always helps me to hear what you say, because it's like, oh, okay, now I understand why I'm experiencing that at the moment. What are your thoughts around this time that we're sitting in? Yeah, well, probably that there's a, there's a couple of big things that I'm, that I'm feeling um, and that is, that's happening. Um, and one big one is that we're, we're coming up to, um, the almost exact square between Saturn and Uranus. And anyone that's listened to our podcast will know that last year 
that's virtually all that was spoken about in terms of astrology. It it was this the 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 planet, the rule maker, the structure coming up against the complete opposite in Uranus of being the rule breaker and the rebel um, and the great awakener, you know, the change maker. So these two were squaring off and squaring means that there's a, you know, no one's going to budge. Um, and that happened three times throughout 2021. Um, and then kind of relaxed, they moved away from each other. And they're coming to, uh, I think, almost one degree away from that same square again. This will be the last one. This will be the last one for, for a very long time. So this is, um, it's almost like whatever was going on for you last year, where you were having, feeling that real tug of um, whichever part was pulling on you more, the structure or the um, moving away from structure or being more free, we're now coming into, okay, that's going to come up again. In a, in a final way and it may really bring a lot more clarity around that that place that place of needing one or other I think all of us collectively and individually um, will see those themes of 2021 come up again um, in this in this next couple of months so that's a really huge piece um, and then the the next hugest piece is this you know, the Aquarian full moon. So you've got the sun in Leo. You've got the moon in Aquarius. They're opposite each other, obviously, at a full moon. Um, and then you've got the north node in Taurus with like conjunct Uranus. And you've got the south node in Scorpio. So that all creates a square. Um, and so squares can be quite, they, 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 they're all playing off each other in so many ways at the moment, all around this Aquarian full moon. You know, Aquarius is this kind of, um, um, the, what I describe Uranus is, Uranus is the planet or the modern ruler of Aquarius. So it's all around that change and um, collective and moving and, um, you know, finding a new way of being, um, wild and crazy ideas, you know, the weird and the wonderful being kind of where we're let, being led. Like what if all those ideas that we could possibly bring onto this planet to bring the change that we need to be seeing, you know, and again, that's collectively and within our own lives. So just big stuff <laughs> all now all now <laughs> yeah and uh I was kind of because I you know we kind of talked briefly about what we were going to bring in and I was feeling in I always go into the Akasha before we we speak just to sort of get a a kind of an Akashic perspective on where we're sitting energetically and you know, there's the, the, the word that I was given that is so strong at the moment is freedom. And we've touched on that a couple of times, both of us in the way that we've been talking. But it's just we're, we're collectively, we're going through a dark night of the soul. And so we know what that feels like. Most of us who have experienced a dark night of the, of the soul at a personal level, at an intimate level. And we're now going through this collectively. And when we go through a dark night of the soul, it is incredibly uncomfortable. There's a lot of shifting. There's a lot of changing. There's a lot of movement as, as everything. Everything changes. It's like we completely lose our sense of self. And so we're experiencing that externally with each other. And then we're also, to some degree, experiencing that at our own level, whether it's, you know, a big dark night of the soul or a smaller one it doesn't really matter we're all experiencing it and what's at the root of this I was shown in the Akasha is this this desire for freedom and the freedom to be who we really want to be and that is driving this energy around us at the moment particularly as it's being supported by these astrological you know influences that are are really it's like we're completely in tune with it even though it feels really overwhelming and uncomfortable and it's so difficult for a lot of people um we're, we're completely in tune with it and it's so necessary for us to get where we want to go because to go as a collective and this is where because oh, actually moving into something completely different but connected to this i'm just being shown is that 
you know, that this year there's this strong desire for reconnection. And we, I think, have perceived that in a certain way. I know personally for me, I perceive that as, oh, I'm going to be becoming more social and I'm going to get out there and I'm going to be seeing people again. And it's actually been quite the opposite. But I've been reconnecting and connecting more in this way online with people. And, you know, what I'm being shown around that is that this desire that we're holding for more freedom and our freedom to be who we are is so that we can step back into reconnection in a completely new and different way so that when we reconnect at a more physical level with each other it will be completely different and that desire to do that is driving all of this unsettling energy that we're sitting in at the moment because to get that complete freedom within ourselves we have to completely change a lot of who we are and what we and our choices that we're making so it's intense it almost feels like we're in this sort of like tumble dryer of energy that just keep we just keep rolling around in it at the moment and it can be quite tiring and overwhelming but it's also giving us the opportunity to you know really look at ourselves and nurture ourselves in the way that we need to and again for you and I it's been more of that drawing inwards and being in our own space doing what makes us really happy following and finding our joy and these are all just key elements of what we're meant to be doing to find our truth anyway so you know it feels totally aligned with what you're talking to there in terms of the astrology as well yeah and something like when you were talking about connection that came up for me is this connecting with um connecting with ourselves but also connecting with um the whatever's greater than us um the earth or spirit or what uh, that side of connection as well and in a way i mean since uluru we, we took a group of women out to uluru in um, april may um, I haven't had a lot of connection with the earth. Like I haven't been doing as much walking as I normally would or finding ways. I mean, you know, like where I'm working now is in a, in a, in a warehouse and, and I'm hardly really even seeing the sky at the moment and has been that way. And I'm kind, I've am i been kind of interested in that, that, that I have had, had that disconnection. But I think if I was to take what you just said, then, then that disconnection from not just people, but also from the earth and connecting in that way, that's a necessary place to be. So that when we do plug back in, we're plugging back in with fresh energy. And that makes complete sense to me, just um, through what you shared. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it makes sense to me too, because I feel quite sometimes I've been questioning, you know, in this, in this time of, turmoil or whatever you want to call it I've been questioning that about myself why aren't you getting out and walking why I mean I'm going, going down to the ocean every day is something I've always done and I haven't been doing that and you know just not getting out at all on the land it's been um yeah quite interesting to observe that within myself but then actually it kind of starts to make sense when you view it in that that different way in that sort of broader perspective yeah. around it yeah mm, I like that I like that and and like you and I think that it, it is this change of season right I'm starting to feel myself um wanting that more and wanting to move more and wanting to reconnect with you know just one-on-one -on -one kind of um connections that I have as opposed to a big group but it's just like slowly coming out I mean like you say we are here in Sydney coming into uh, into spring and there is this like ah, oh, you know the light starting to get a little bit warmer the sun is peeking through and it's um it feels like that in so many ways um for me I do feel like moving and and getting out there starting to starting to awaken starting yes. to awaken Almost like just sort of peeking your head out and just testing it rather than just jumping in at this stage. It doesn't, you know, like I feel like I, there's a thought of doing it rather than actually doing it now, whereas before there wasn't the thought of doing it. It was like, no, I don't even feel like it. And, and, and with that, can I just sort of bring up, because it's just come up for me, um, mm -hmm. is this awareness of how important 
spring and autumn are in the whole seasons because for me normally I was thinking I'd be sitting in this place of sun I want to be out in the sun I want it to be full summer and yet right now to me full summer seems just too much Mm -hmm. I really need this transition that's a really new place to feel into that the the transitional seasons um you know like I've always kind of been comfortable with skiing in winter and, and and swimming in summer and those middle bits were just kind of like you just get through them and get to the the punchline and I don't, I'm really negotiating this spring feeling in a new way uh, which is also speaking to that kind of the the reconnecting in a new way of really mm-hmm. honoring that place of not yet just be in the transition Yes, I love that. And thank you for bringing that to my attention because I wasn't aware of it before, but I can totally resonate with that experience. And for me, it's always been like I'm a summer person. I love the sun. And winter to me is always like an an unnecessary season that we have to go through. (laughs) It's really unnecessary. We don't need it. And of course, this last few months has taught me how necessary it is because I've been so aligned to that energy of slowing down, tuning in, hibernating, resting, reflecting, which is winter energy. And I too have been sort of craving because we've had such a long wet winter here as well and we've had a lot of wet damp problems in the house and it's just like I want to go out into the sun and dry my body out I feel like I you know I have felt damp to the bones here in Sydney and you know it's been this you know craving really for summer to come and and feel all of that but I totally agree with that perception you hold around that being too much and there needs to be this integration period between or transition period between those two between the winter and the summer and so the value of spring is becoming more important more aware and I think that's a deeper connection because we're connecting more with the earth and all of the flow of the earth all of the seasons Therefore, we're starting in our own individual ways to acknowledge the beauty in each of those, you know, seeds. I think this is the first time I'll probably ever in my whole life in 61 years, I'll ever look back and say, that was a great winter. (laughs) I needed that winter. You know, I needed that. For the first time ever, as we went into winter, I was looking forward to it. For the first time ever, I was done with the humid, hot weather. And I was listening to a podcast and it's really important. Um, I, I just, I want to bring it up because it's like along this line and it's, um, uh, I'm just going to get the name of it because people may want to look at it. Um, it is called uh, The Time of the Feminine. Um, and there's these two really beautiful women that bring on different um, people and interview them. And the one that I was just listening to, I've only listened to a couple, to be honest, but I was um, listening to one before. And it was this woman who's very much in touch with the earth and the, the, the I guess, I'm speaking to the earth and speaking about, I mean, when I say speaking, it's that feeling into you know, spending time on land as we do. But there was a sense of what's going on in the earth, obviously being a reflection of what's happening, what what we do, what we what we're doing as humans, um, and that the heating of the planet through global warming is this kind of respecting of the fire or respecting of this kind of forward moving energy of doing of you know, and if you looked at like the whole global warming of being that kind of loving of summer in a way, um, and 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 the earth asking us to respect the other seasons, mm-hmm. it kind of brings it into an interesting perspective. Oh, it sure does. This is huge. And I've actually kind of just had a massive awakening over it during this podcast. So I love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Something for me to sit with and really consider because it's it's completely shifted my previous awareness of the, the seasons. And, my, and, and I know how hard I pushed away winter as it being not something 
to enjoy or you know to hate the cold to instead of enjoying you know being snug in your house with the fire going I'm hating it you know it's too cold outside and so I think this is going to be a beautiful integration for me this conversation and I hope for anyone listening to the podcast it opens up uh, maybe an inner inquiry around that for that for yourself so that you can see where you sit with it at the moment because it feels like it's a it's a a conscious awareness we're becoming connected to that will really help us be again more in flow with the earth here which yeah. is what we're which we're, what, what we're aiming for really mm-hmm. at the moment mm-hmm. beautiful conversation I've really yes. enjoyed it thank you you and and with that we've been asking over many podcasts for questions from people um and i've got one that actually ties in with this from from lucy who we both know in kayama and her question is actually in two parts but she asks us how does connecting with the land facilitate deep healing and transformational shifts within those willing to receive and what part can animals play in this specific process, if any? Which is a beautiful question. So thank you, Lucy, for that. So what are your thoughts on that? Oh, um, well, I mean, we both work so so much with the land. And, um, you know, for me, um, other than my art practice, my practice is being on land um, spending time in nature going to the ocean or going out into the outback and just communing and I guess for me that means silence um, and just being being rather than doing um, and then just I guess um, through just being in the present with whatever nature is around me it feels like it opens up a whole new world of seeing um, where what I'm seeing on the outside through nature is reflected to something that's going on within me. And the same happens with animals with me. I don't have, I've never really been a pet person, but when I'm out in nature, animals speak to me in terms of what I notice, what comes up, what's around me, um, what I might be, you know, often say when I'm down at the beach there'll be this heron that's going through a particular motion or um, way of being in in its cycle and that is guiding me to a particular cycle within me or you know birds are huge I mean I think they are for both of us so you know seeing those eagles but then when you see an eagle what is it doing you know is it just flying at, at high heights and it's coming nowhere near the land or is it hovering and diving and and what messages can you get out of the movements um out of the colors out of the is all those just i I think i've I've just learned to observe the world through such a different lens because of the time spent with nature and being quiet and being um present It, it it just you just get so much language and you you learn more and more to translate that language um, as to what what that it has for you in the moment yeah beautiful I, I totally agree I mean for me I think um, the way that we heal and tra- and create inner transformation on the land is that we first of all we set an intention we know our intention is to go out and and to simply be and commune with the land you know and so through that intention we connect more deeply with it and we give ourselves space because that's something we don't have in our day-to-day lives usually is the space to just be, to just sit on the land and see what service is. So it's it's offering us the opportunity to create the space for healing and transformation. That is always there and available to us, but we very rarely give ourselves the, the space to do that. But when we set the intention to take ourselves out on land, we open up to that. So it's almost like this, this invitation for that healing to take place so for me for me personally 
I've always done my greatest healing out on the land because I allow myself the space and time to do that. Um, and then animals for me have always been very symbolic. So an eagle represents sort of such powerful, joyful energy. Whenever I see an eagle, whether it's when we're out on land or even when I'm at home, I just know that's going to be a good day. It's going to be a really good, positive, powerful day. They seem to bring that message to me. And then other times they can be symbols that I need to sort of sit with that. And, you know, an animal can come and connect with me. I remember sitting out at um, Matajulu. Uh, no, not at Matajulu. I always get the names. I did that. Um, out Dilara? of Broken Hill. No, it was out of Broken Hill on the land out there, which I've forgotten the name of now. Um, Matawinji. Anyway. Yes, thank you, Matawinji. And um, and just this this lizard, big lizard. I'm not really particularly connected to lizards normally, but this just this lizard came and sat on the rock next to me the whole time I sat there and didn't move till I moved. And it was just this almost, it felt like, uh, this presence that had come and sat on this rock with me to commune with me um, and at that time I remember I had some really big powerful insights into something and that that lizard definitely felt like part of that journey for me so I find that when I'm out on the land it's not a it's not that I have a lot of connections with animals out there often it's more birds actually than animals for me but I know that for a lot of people they have these sort of uh, connections that again deepen their experience so I think the animals come forward to help us deepen our experience and understanding of ourselves in some way hmm. it's a beautiful question Lucy yeah. thank you for Absolutely. sending that in mm. Mm. Well, does that feel complete to you, Fiona? That feels like a great conversation. Thank you, Denny. And I, I'm certainly going to go away with this with some insights and some things to integrate and think over. So it was beautiful. Thank you. Yes. And thank you, Lucy, for, for, for the question. And um, for anyone else out there listening, if you do have any questions around anything, to be honest, um, um, we'd love to hear about it. Um, I don't know, I kind of thought I was going to get into a little bit of the menopause topic today and it just didn't come up, but next time maybe. Because <laughs> I think oh, it's yeah. such a big thing to, to you know, open up to and, and, and bring an awareness around to around for so many women out there. Oh, absolutely. I would love questions on any topic, weird and wonderful, because I love to be stretched and I love to sort of feel into things that I may not have even experienced before myself and just you know just see what surfaces around those conversations so whatever you have questions on please send them in beautiful we'll see you next week bye